Jesus. <laughs> I'm way too big. There's nothing. Baldurin and his winged ally admiring the fruits of their labor. The city itself. Incredible. An elf and a bronze dragon. Allies at sea. Alderaan sails away and leaves the dragon to watch over a city. Do the histories make mention of this? The statue before you bears a familiar likeness. It is Balduran, the celebrated adventurer who founded the city of Baldur's Gate. Peril floods my province. The Palisades fall, the earth does tremble. The servants of shadow and blood assemble. Beyond lies the Grand Worm, deep in slumber, awaiting a true hero's advent, should my domain drown in torment. Be you the deluge, turn away. Be you the hero, answer true. Are you worthy? Poetic nonsense. There is no worm and no savior. You sense neither life nor spirit within the statue. A powerful variant of magic mouth has been cast on it, allowing it to speak only recorded messages. Ancient Ansor, hear me. A champion is proclaimed. The test begins. Let your judgment follow. How old is this place? champion burns bright, even when rushing waters and moaning winds threaten to extinguish the flames. Take the torch, withstand the elements, prove your courage.
In position.
Let's see. Moving in. Damn, it's good to be alive. Watch this. At least things have stayed interesting. Prove your strategic wits. There is but one rule. The Dark King must fall in two moves. Are you a commander of armies or a shivering pawn? Fodder for cleverer minds. I'm afraid I have little experience with lance board, let alone the command of soldiers. Seems simple enough.
May you always crush the wicked, be they pawn, knight, or monarch. Proceed. A good leader has the insight to find good counsel. As a war reaches its end, there is one who doesn't advise for the city's prosperity. Find him and strike him down. for me. First step is the hardest.
paintings hung on the wall. A true champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Justice. No pardon without repentance and no penalty without mercy. The right path often lies between the extremes. Wise indeed, though I can't take credit. It was my father who taught me the ways of the just. I need a quick word. Away! Behold, the paintings tell the tale. My judgment is rendered. The thief earns his due. The shadows are blocking me. I need to get rid of them somehow. The apple. The painting depicts a red-haired man stealing a shiny apple from a cart in an open-air market. You know this market, the Wide, where Baldur's Gate citizens and visitors gather to conduct trade and wax political. The Child. A red-haired man is portrayed with his cloak's hood lowered, giving an apple to a smiling urchin. Several other children are huddled behind the one receiving the apple, hands outstretched. The induction. A red-haired man is depicted in hushed conversation with a dark-haired woman. She wears a cloak with an unusual symbol on it, tally marks totaling the number nine. The theft. A red-haired man is depicted in the Hall of Wonders thieving what looks to be a priceless artifact. It's an astrolabe of entrapment. It could hold a dozen gin within it, perhaps even more. The chase. A red-haired man is depicted running through the city streets, a flaming fist officer chasing just behind. A cloaked woman, hair dark as a raven, looks on from a safe distance. The Judgment. A stern judge, his pockets full of coin, orders a red-haired man to the gallows. A shiny apple rests on the ground nearby. The shadows are blocking me. I need to get rid of them somehow. Can't afford to stay idle. I'll fix that. Vincere! Vincere! No one stopped me yet. The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a ten-day left to serve, judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. What's next? Freedom. A red-haired man walks the streets of Baldur's Gate, clad in a billowing cloak. You catch a glimpse of a sly smile beneath his hood and a golden coin in his hand. A thief walks free. Is this truly justice? Meetings on the way. Day of the hanging. A red-haired man is depicted hanging from a gallows as a crowd looks on. 
You notice a child in the crowd, a falling tear leaving a trail on his cheek. Time to rest. The dishonorable judge was banished. But judgment must still be passed. Courage does the hero march, fettered by the taxing chains of fear. A stalwart soul must ever persevere. With insight does the hero choose, guidance born of ancient wisdom proven. Peace, not strife, the undenied conclusion. With justice does the hero rule. Lead not the guiltless lamb to bloody slaughter, nor cleanse the lion's sins in sacred water. With strategy does the hero scheme. A cunning mind, a hundred steps ahead, your allies close, your rivals stunned in dread. Worthy you are found. Go forth, hero. Seize your fate and rise, great worm, heart of the gate. They're not yours, but the worms. I am Ansor, heart of the gate, butchered in flesh, risen in spirit. Ansor wends his way through your mind like an unstoppable river. Your body is unmoving, yet thought flows effortlessly between you. The spirit pauses, and you feel the astral prism stir. Ansel senses the Emperor's presence within it. Answer me, Facey. Why have you come? deep sigh resonates within you. The torrent stills, only disturbed by the dragon's next words. Brack, my words aren't meant for you. They're meant for him. The Emperor stirs in the astral prison, then in you, calm, curious, and detached. presence has stirred me, as it ever did. I am awakened. Answer. It's been too long. Older? No. I don't believe it. A 
name I once answered to. A name I did not expect to hear again. Least of all from the mouth of an old friend. Friend. Yes. And more. Until you killed me. Have you come to dance on my bones, Borderan? Was slaying me not satisfaction enough? Satisfaction? No. You left me no choice. You had every choice. You were becoming illithid. I offered you merciful death. You chose to fight. And now you bring your thrall before me. How far has the great Balderan fallen? Stillness. Ansur's consciousness hovers just above yours, searching, seeing. Dear Ansur. Enough! I gave you everything, Borderan, and you repaid me in slaughter. It is time I return the favor. Let my bones rise and the storms gather. Witness, Borderan. The final tempest has come. I am the heart of the gate. I am the one who roars. This time, you will not escape it! Survival is all that matters.
another step forward. I'm sore. I never thought I'd see him again. I was. Now, I am much, much more. But it seems you are more interested in my past. Such sentimentality. Very well. It's like I always told you. I was just like you. An adventurer who yearned for greatness. And in mortal terms, I achieved it. As captain of the Wandering Eye, I acquired enough gold to fan all this gate. I stayed for a while to watch my city grow. But it was not enough. I grew restless again. The sea called to me. And I ran to her with open arms. Life at sea was not easy. Our last adventure was ruinous. My ship was destroyed. My crew lost. But my spirit was far from broken. I was determined to return in triumph once again. I heard of treasure in Moonrise. I strove to find it. What I found was an illithid colony where I acquired a tadpole much like yours, and became a mind flayer, and threw it to the Elder Brain. It was Ansor who found me. Ansor who pulled me from the Brain's domination. Ansor who brought me home. He sought to cure me of my sickness, called on every healer he could find, nearly broke his spirit in the attempt. But he failed to understand. I wanted no healing. I was not sick. Stelmane's death was not my fault. Ansar's death was born of necessity. And make no mistake, I grieved them both. Ansar, in particular. Even after he had exhausted all possibility of reversing my condition, he still clung to hope. I tried to convince him of my reality. I was on the cusp of greatness beyond my wildest dreams. But all he could see was a mind flare. He came to me as I slept, a mercy killing in his mind. I saw the tears. I felt his grief. I had no choice but to kill him first. It was an act of self-preservation. easier said than lived by. Do not think that I am ignorant of what I have lost. I may not regret my actions, but I do regret that they were necessary. While the past is beyond my influence, the present is not. It is time we move on. Let's 
que caben. Hey, watch it. Never a dull moment. Still breathing, despite everything. the gate is dead. We need to see my father. He should know what happened with Ansu. How much farther can I go? inside. The Helm of Baldurat. The Worm's Tempest and his roar hurtle through you. Ansur's essence still lives within the Helm, instilling you with power for as long as you wear it. well that ends not as bad as it could have the absolute's voice is gone but i still hear its echoes reflections of reflections a terrible fate for answer my son yet my hopes for the city's future have never been higher I failed, father. The worm is fallen. A terrible fate for Ansar, my son. Yet my hopes for the city's future have never been higher. I don't understand. You and your allies slayed the undead terror that was once the great Ansar. You are stronger than even the great worm. You will be the one to part the storms and lead the people through. You, not answer, are the savior we need. First, you will fell the Absolute. Then we will rebuild Baldur's Gate. We will take back our city together. I will name you Baldur's Gate's newest Grand Duke of the Council. You will be hailed Heart of the Gate. Grand Duke, I look the part of a fiend. I will tell the citizens and the patriarchs of your good works. They will know you carry your father's banner. Uncertainty fills the air. Will has reached a fork in his path. In which direction will he travel? Will? 
I fought to right the wrongs of the coast, to slay the men and monsters that hunt the helpless. It is in the wilds that I find my courage, not in the halls of upper city estates. There will be no Grand Duke Will Ravenguard, and there will be no Blade of Frontiers. I am now the Blade of Avernus. For as long as demons and devils imperil the Sword Coast, they will be my prey. Then go with my blessing. Be Faerun's great defender. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. Let these be the lights that guide you, my son. Hail! The Blade of Avernus. A calm settles over you. The Elder Brain is a menace, but with the Blade of Avernus at your side, you know you can triumph. What path lies before me? The Blade of Avernus. A new name for a changed man. The four pillars finally rise within me. Courage. Insight, strategy, justice. I'm not to abide them, but to become them. Ah, but enough reflection for today. I'm of a mind to celebrate. A hearty meal would do the trick. A few hunks of fresh venison, a round of brown ale. What do you say? Wonderful. You hunt the deer, I'll scrounge up the ale. Prepare your belly for a roast a la blade. <laughs> Let's hope Gale doesn't take offense if I assume cooking duties just the once. I scout both the hells and the coast's havens, and I destroy every fiend that dares put its eye on Faerun. Will takes a sharp breath. He's keeping something from you. Hmm. Yes, there is. I will be hunting Mazora. I won't let her claim one more soul, slay one more victim. I'm going to make my way to the hells and tear the horns right off her damned head. Father trained me in the sword and the bow. They'll have to sustain me. Damn right. I'll cut her to ribbons before she can so much as groan Zariel's name. Sure. Are you sure? The blade stands at the ready. And just when...